Fashion Gala event is this Friday, January 26th. It's just six days away. The theme is Pirates of the Catholic Caribbean. Stop in the gather area to purchase your ticket. All of you are welcome. If you would like to donate a bottle of wine for the wine wall, please bring it to the parish office as soon as possible. We are gathered together as God has gathered us together to renew our efforts in the sharing of life and being the love of Christ. So please stand and welcome all people. Please join in our gathering hymn, All Creatures of Our God and King, number 537, or on the screens. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. And with your Good afternoon, everyone. Yes, everyone. Gathered in prayer, we come on this, the third Sunday in ordinary time, when we come to hear the call to follow him. So as disciples of the Lord, as people called each day to respond to the call to holiness, let us be ever mindful of the times when we have failed in our attempts to be disciples of Christ. Let us open our hearts to the power and the gift of his hope and forgiveness. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, 
Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, direct our actions according to your good pleasure. For in the name of your beloved Son, we may abound in good works. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Jonah. The word of the Lord came to Jonah, saying, Set out for the great city of Nineveh, and announce to it the message that I will tell you. So Jonah made ready and went to Nineveh, according to the Lord's bidding. Now Nineveh was an enormously large city. It took three days to go through it. Jonah began his journey through the city and had gone but a single day's walk, announcing, Forty days more and Nineveh shall be destroyed. When the people of Nineveh believed God, they proclaimed a fast, and all of them, great and small, put on sackcloth. When God saw by their actions how they turned from their evil way, he repented of the evil that he had threatened to do to them. He did not carry it out. The word of the Lord. Gently leading the poor and the humble to
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. I tell you, brothers and sisters, the time is running out. From now on, let those having wives act as not having them, those weeping as not weeping, those rejoicing as not rejoicing, those buying as not owning, those using the world as not using it fully. For the Lord in its present form is passing away. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. After John had been arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the gospel of God. This is the time of fulfillment. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. As he passed by the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting their nets into the sea. They were fishermen. Jesus said to them, Come after me, and I will make you fishers of people. And they abandoned their nets and followed him. He walked, on, or walked along a little farther and saw James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They too were in a boat, mending their nets. Then he called them. So they left their father Zebedee in the boat, along with the hired men, and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. O 
But before I get into my homily this evening, I have to clarify an important point. Something that perhaps some of you have on your minds tonight. <laughs> this past Wednesday, a young boy came into the church. It was faith formation night, and he was donned in purple from head to toe. A proud Vikings fan indeed. And he came up to me, and he had this serious look on his face, and he said, Father Steve, is it okay to pray to God that the Vikings win next week? And I looked at him and I said, well, in order to answer that question, let me ask you another question. What happens if the people in Philadelphia are praying to God that Philadelphia wins? What is God supposed to do? And the young boy dressed in purple from head to toe looked at me and he responded with a smile on his face. I bet God likes purple better. <laughs> so there you have it for the record. I hope God has other more important things to worry about, but I too think God loves purple better. Why fishermen? Why such a trade that Jesus would choose to have as his helpers, his confidants, his disciples? Why fishermen? They certainly were not the most polished of the day. They certainly maybe weren't even the most intelligent people of the day. So why fishermen? After all, why not carpenters? Jesus had grown up around one. He knew that carpenters are people of precision that measure twice and cut once. So why didn't Jesus ask carpenters to be his followers? Or if not carpenters, certainly he was familiar with shepherds. Why not ask them? They were a motley crew indeed, and why maybe he didn't ask them because they stunk. They didn't take showers or baths very often. Their hygiene was not certainly very good. So why fishermen? They stunk like fish. Why them? Certainly the fishermen in the day of our Lord were free and independent entrepreneurs. Oftentimes, they were people that, of course, were hard workers. They, were, they had a mindset of getting up every day and going out and having the faith to be able to cast the net and why they were not afraid of the storms and the risks that it took to be able to go out into the sea to gather in the nets in the hopes of catching a fish or two. Is that why Jesus picked the fishermen? I think it's because of some other reasons. I think he asked Simon and Andrew, James and John in today's gospel to follow him because, of course, he knew there were certain characteristics of fishermen that he needed for this work that was at hand. And what was at hand? Why, the kingdom is at hand. Notice that's what Jesus preached in his very first sermon at the beginning of today's gospel. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. So, because the kingdom was at hand, and because Jesus needed help bringing about this kingdom, he chose fishermen who had these qualities. Number one, fishermen, why they were, they knew how to fish. What does that mean? It means that they were willing to cast their nets again and again, and again, even if it was not successful the first time, or the second, or the third. And Jesus knew that the kingdom that was at hand oftentimes would not go heated the first time. It would not be accepted the second time. It would not be welcomed even the third time. So he needed that, that quality that is found in people who fish persistence, perseverance. 
throwing the net again and again and again. The second quality that he loved about fishermen and those who fish was that, of course, they were flexible. They realized that when they went out into the sea that they would might have to change their course and the direction of their sail based upon the winds and the storms that came the way. And Jesus knew that when it came to the kingdom, there would indeed be a change in the direction of the winds. And the wind would be strong, and it would be a wind that people had not ever experienced or felt before. It would be a wind that would bring with it some warmth and some flame. And Jesus knew that he needed people who were, who were flexible, who could change course at a moment's notice, who weren't afraid to be able to push the sail in a different direction. And the third and perhaps most important quality in those who love to fish was that these fishermen, Simon and Andrew, James and John, they knew that even though it was risky work, in order to be a good fisherman, you got to go out into deep water. You got to be willing to go into the deep water. Jesus would need those kinds of people, willing to take a risk, willing to not be satisfied with just sh staying around the shallow ends, because of course there the water is certainly warmer, but oftentimes that's not where you'll find the fish gathering. Jesus knew he needed people who were willing to go out into the deep water. So that's why Jesus needed fishermen, people who had those qualities of flexibility, who had those qualities of risk-taking, who had those qualities of willing to go out into deep water, who had those qualities of perseverance and persistence to throw the net again and again and again. And our Lord Jesus needs those same kind of people today in our world in our community, in our area of faith community. Jesus needs the same type of men and women who are willing to go out each and every day and to keep casting the net, the net of forgiveness and the net of compassion and the net of kindness and the net of reconciliation and the net that ultimately keeps bringing people in into this kingdom of peace and of love and of grace and of forgiveness and of kindness and of mercy. And Jesus still needs men and women like you and I who are willing to indeed be flexible and to realize that even though we are convinced that the course that we are on is the right course, sometimes we realize that given the winds and the storms that come into our lives, the unexpected surprises that are not part of our plan, notice the words I used, our plan. When you and I can realize that, why then? Jesus needs men and women like ourselves who are willing to adjust the sail. And it's going to head us in a different direction, a place we've not been before. But with trust. Why, like good fishermen, we trust our tools, and most importantly, we trust one another. And we set our sail, and we head in a different direction. And the direction that it takes us is into deep water, water we've not seen or even been there before. And we take the risk, and we cast the net. And it goes down into the depths of this cool, dark water. And together, why, together we pull up the net to discover that there we find, if we're willing, to be flexible, to change the course, to cast the net, to be able to go into deep water while together, then we discover that there's, there's a great find there. And what we find is, well, what we find is the kingdom. The kingdom that's right here and right now. Not a kingdom that's far off, not a kingdom that's only possible when we take our last breath, not this kingdom that is somehow we call heaven that is well, whenever it happens, it's there. 
No, the kingdom of God, Jesus says in his very first homily, the kingdom of God is at hand. It's right here. It's right now. And when we gather in the nets, we discover that the kingdom that we've been desiring, that we've been hoping for, that we've been longing for, that we've been fishing for, why, it's been there all the time. And the net is filled with love. And the net is filled with the gift and the blessings of family. And the net is filled with those neighbors and strangers that we perhaps didn't know, but of course now we've come to know because we've, we've dared to set sail in a different direction and we've allowed the winds to blow into our hearts and into our lives from a different way. And because of that, some incredible things happen. We not only discover the kingdom, but we realize that when we do that, why we can let go of the net. And like Sandra, Simon and Andrew, James and John, we will follow him, we will imitate him, we will love him, because we will become like him. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered a death and was buried, and rose again on the third day. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who at the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Gathered here is God's people called to follow Christ, let us as his disciples offer these prayers and petitions. That in choosing each day to be a disciple of Christ, we may receive the grace to persevere in joyful service, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For rulers that they listen to God, seek pathways to peace and justice, tend to the poor, the hungry, and the homeless, and protect the sanctity of life, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For members of this area of faith community, that we will share the life of Christ and be the love of Christ by casting our nets aside and following him, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For pastors, missionaries, theologians, musicians, writers, and teachers, and for all who work to proclaim the gospel and clarify its message, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, the aged, the dying, and for those who have died, remembering Dorothy, Tracy, and Brad Lippert, Fred Koval, Tom and Donna Lehman, and Ed Leschke, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For greater unity among all Christians, as we celebrate Christian Unity Week, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord our God, we gather in prayer this day. We hear your call to follow you, and so we pray that through this Eucharist, you might grant to us the grace and the resolve to 
follow in the footsteps of your Son. Hear us as we pray. Answer our petitions according to your will, for we ask them through Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite our children to bring their offering forward. Please join us, number 503, Pescadore de Hombres, Lord, you have come. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God and the Almighty Father. Accept our offerings, O Lord, and in sanctifying them, grant that they may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With your Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin Mary. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim.
You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love. And when is once for the disciples, so now for us he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you sanctify and send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death of all until. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross, to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the Spirit of your love, we may be counted now until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. By our partaking of this mystery, Almighty God, give us life through your Spirit that we may be conformed to the image of your Son and confirm us in the bond of communion together with Francis, our Pope, John, our Bishop, with all other bishops, with priests and deacons, and with your entire people. Grant that all the faithful of your Church, looking into the signs of the times by the light of faith, may constantly devote themselves to the service of the gospel. Keep us attentive to the needs of all, that sharing their grief and pain, their joy and their hope, we may faithfully bring them the good news of salvation and go forward with them along the way of your kingdom. Remember our sisters and our brothers who have died in the peace of your Christ and all the dead, whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection. Give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever, there in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, and with all the saints. We shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 With longing for the coming of God's kingdom, we continue to pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but to deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom. 
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share with one another a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those now called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Please join us in our communion hymn number 354, The Supper of the Lord. Precious body, precious blood, seen as bread and wine. Hear the Lord prepares a feast divine. Bread of love is broken now, cup of life is full. 
Precious body, precious blood, seen as bread and wine. Hear the Lord prepares a feast divine. Bread of love is broken now, cup of life is full. Precious body, precious blood, seen as bread and wine. Hear the Lord prepares the feast divine. Bread of love is broken now, cup of life is poured. Come share the supper of the Lord. I am the bread of heaven, giving life to you. You that eat this bread shall never. Precious body, precious blood, pain is bread and wine. Did the Lord prepares a feast divine. <coughs> bread of love is broken now, cup of life is full. Come share the supper of the Lord. All those who feed on me have their life in me. As I have my life in the living God. Precious body, precious blood, seen as bread and wine. Hear the Lord prepares a feast Bread of love is broken now, cup of life is full, come share the supper of the Lord. All praise to you, O Christ, present in this feast. This bread we share in one life, one Lord. Precious body, precious blood, seen as bread and wine. Hear the Lord prepares a feast. Broken now. Come.
cup of life is full. Come share the supper of the Lord. Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, that receiving the grace by which you bring us to new life, we may always glory in your gifts. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. This week we started the <clears throat> week of prayer for Christian unity and in conjunction with this week for prayer of Christian unity tomorrow uh, there'll be an opportunity you're invited to join our brothers and sisters from other Christian denominations uh, at Calvary Lutheran Church uh, for an ecumenical prayer service that will be led by our own Bishop John Lavore, uh, Bishop of our diocese as well as Bishop John Anderson uh, the Bishop of the Southwest uh, Province of the Lutheran Church. Again, that'll be at Calvary Lutheran Church tomorrow afternoon at 2 p.m. And Bishop Lavore has assured me that it will long be over and you will be home in plenty of time for the game. He's not preaching, Bishop Anderson is. So I don't know <laughs> for what that's worth. Anyways, so that's at 2 o'clock tomorrow at Calvary Lutheran uh, Church. Again, everybody is welcome uh, to that event. Enjoy the game tomorrow. Remember, it's just a game. So sometimes it's good to take a deep breath, right? Even though when we get really, really angry and excited and all those kinds of emotions that come with a big game like this, win or lose, come Monday morning, God still loves purple better, and there'll probably be snow to shovel, all right? So whatever it is, enjoy the game tomorrow. Our Mass is now ended. Let us go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. And in that spirit, because you seem to be a little down tonight, I think it might be the nerves. How about we do the cheer like something crazy? Are you ready? Here we go. Skull, 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 skull. There you go. You're ready to go. And with that, let us go forth singing 564, Lord of the Dance. I danced in the morning when the world was begun, and I danced in the moon and the stars and the sun, and I came down from heaven and I danced on the at Bethlehem, my God, my birth. Dance then, wherever you may be. I am the Lord of the dance, said he. I'll lead you all, wherever you may be. I will lead you all in the dance, said he. I dance for the scribe and the Pharisee.